Welcome, I'm Wes, and I've got a question for you. Do you know how your sewing machine works? I mean, really, do you really know how your sewing machine works? If I taught you how to fix a problem on your sewing machine by adjusting the timing of the hook or fixing your needle height, uh, would you know why that fixed the problem? I've had many, many, many questions since I started this YouTube channel about specific situations. There's an old adage. If you give someone a fish, they eat for the day. If you teach someone to fish, they eat for a lifetime. So my goal in this series of videos is to teach you how to fish. Yep, I'm gonna teach you how to fix any sewing machine, not just the one that you have, but you could look at any sewing machine and be able to understand how to fix different problems that could occur on that sewing machine. This series is gonna be five parts. So we're gonna start out today with learning how a sewing machine works, and then we're gonna go through the various different types of problems that you can run into with a sewing machine. The first two videos are the most important videos. So this video, which is the first video, is going to show you how sewing machines work and the various parts on them can, that can be adjusted and need to be operating properly for your sewing machine to work. And the second video, which is also just as important and actually can fix a lot of problems is just how to clean a sewing machine. Sometimes cleaning is all a machine needs in order to get back to work. And in the third through the fifth video, we're gonna talk about the tensions, the timing, and troubles. So those three videos are actually what are gonna teach you how to go in and diagnose and then solve a problem with sewing machines. Once we get into this first video, you're gonna see that sewing machines haven't changed really much over the years. And we're gonna start out with a sewing machine from 1897 and learn how that thing works. Then we're also gonna look at a newer sewing machine and see how it operates and how those things are very similar to what they had back in the 1800s. So my goal for this series of videos is to give you the understanding and the know-how to fix all of these problems. So let's get started. Here's a machine from the 1800s whose design is not too different from what we have today. The inventors of the 1800s were trying to build a machine that could reliably and repeatedly produce a lock stitch. Well, what's a lock stitch? That's a stitch where the upper thread comes down and around the lower thread and they lock each other in the fabric. This process repeats over and over until you're done with a seam. Well, you can't have large spools of thread going around each other at 900 times a minute. So let's see how they figured this out. They decided to spin the lower thread onto a bobbin, which could move through a loop in the upper thread to create a lock stitch. You just place a bobbin in the shuttle and it would oscillate as the upper thread came down through a specially designed needle with a hole in the end of it. You can see the shuttle pick up the thread from the needle. Once it passes through the thread from the needle, that creates the lock stitch. But now you have a loop of thread under the fabric. That loop needs to be taken up after the shuttle passes by. Maybe we should invent a lever to do that. But what would we call this lever that takes up the thread? Hmm. How about a take up lever? See how it moves up just as the shuttle passes by the needle? Now, can you see that it's important that the shuttle and the needle pass each other at the correct time? We'll talk more about that in a later video. How does this take up lever pull the thread from the bottom and not from the spool? Is it magic? How does it know which side to take up? Well, if you follow the other side of this lever, you'll notice it goes through the tension assembly. This provides an amount of tension on the upper thread so the machine will work properly. So one of the purposes is to make sure the upper thread is properly taken up after passing around the shuttle. We'll talk about the second reason in another video. Okay, we've created the lock stitch, now what? Well, we need to advance the fabric for the next stitch. This is where the feed dogs and the presser foot work together to accomplish this. Once the needle comes back up out of the fabric, the feed dogs also come up and grab the fabric to move it a specified length. 
If you notice, this has to happen at the correct time. Otherwise, it's trying to move the fabric while the needle is in the fabric. And we'll talk about more of that on another video, um, but that's where your timing of your feed comes into play. So to recap, we created a lock stitch, we pulled the thread tight, we advanced the fabric and started the process all over again. We learned about a needle, a bobbin, a shuttle, a take-up lever, feed dogs, and a presser foot. You still with me? You can find all of these components on even the most modern sewing machines. Let's take a look at this one. In recent days, there have been a few changes to the mechanics of sewing machines. Or has there? Let's look at a modern machine. Here you can see the needle coming down and the hook coming around to pull the upper thread around the bobbin case. The hook and the bobbin cases are both what was considered the shuttle on the old Singer. You can also see that the take-up lever serves the same purpose. The parts have different names, but still accomplish the same tasks. As far as digital machines, I have a video that discusses differences involved with those machines. It still has the same functions as that old Singer, it just goes about them differently. It's nothing to be afraid of when you realize that it has the same function. Now sewing machines needed a mechanism that could sew a zigzag stitch. Now the needle had to move left and right at just the right time to intercept the hook when it came around. This mechanism added complexity to the machine workings as everything had to be operated by the rotation of the motor. Lots of cams, gears, and linkages that oscillate in an orchestrated sequence to produce the perfect stitch. These machines are an amazing feat of engineering. It was my goal in this video to help you have a better understanding of how a sewing machine works. I hope you've come away with more knowledge than what you came in with. We'll be building on this base of information as we move forward with the next few videos. We'll revisit that old Singer and the newer machine. This video is the most important video of the series. Watch this again if you don't understand how that sewing machine works. Don't move on to the next video until you can understand and can follow how this machine works. The next video is going to be another preparatory step before we get into how to actually fix problems because it's actually the first step I use every time I repair a sewing machine, and that is cleaning the machine. And it's so much more than just cleaning a sewing machine. So be sure to stick around for that video because it's the next one in the series. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please, please subscribe to this channel if you really enjoy what you're seeing and you wanna see the rest of the videos in this series. If you'd like to support the channel, be sure to check out the description underneath the video and it's got a few things you can do there to help out the channel so we can continue to provide great content for you. What this video really is is a course. It's the first video in a course to teach you how to repair sewing machines. A lot of people have their own courses online and they charge you money for them. I'm not charging any money. This is a free course that you can take and you can learn how to fix sewing machines for free. Now if you got some value out of it and you want to give back uh, feel free to do so. Check out the description. There are a few ways where you can give back to the channel.